Amen. Amen. You know, that song that the chorister sang was a prophetic song. Very prophetic. I want you to release your faith in that direction tonight. That there is a God in heaven who can bring light and put an end to darkness. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That's the center of the message of that song. That God can change things for the better. And give you a new beginning. And give your family a new beginning. Is that okay? I want you to trust that God tonight. There is nothing that he cannot do. Okay? And the song that they sang to bring me up. It's also prophetic of how God is going to do it. Because you have to look at the relationship, the connection between their main ministration and the song to bring me up. Did you get that now? Because when you get to church, you connect so many things by the Spirit of God and then you can release your faith. The main song is that God can do it. He can change darkness into light. Isn't it? Praise God. And then, when they were bringing me up, they, they, that song that they sang tells us how God is going to do it. Changing darkness into light is the move of Jesus. And how is he going to do it? By his word and by his spirit. By his grace. By his word. By his spirit. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So you are going to release your faith in his word tonight. You are releasing your faith in his grace. You are releasing your faith in his spirit tonight. Amen. Tonight we are going to worship God. Don't ever forget that. As you step into the presence of God, don't ever forget that. It is a protocol of his presence. It is not religious. But we minister to our God. No matter how urgent what we are asking for. There are times that you turn your urgent request to worship. And you see him walk like never before. Is that okay? Let's open our Bible to Genesis 14, 22. I'm going to read two scriptures and then I'll tell you what we are worshiping God for. Genesis 14, 22. You know the story very well. When, Saul was, uh, when Lot was captured and uh, Abraham had to uh, prepare 318 of his servants and they went after those marauders that came to capture Lord and they went after them fought them killed all of them collected all they had stolen and all the goods and the men and when, he, when they came back from that battle the king of Sodom, you remember? The king of Sodom went to meet him and said to Abraham, just give me the people that you have rescued back and you take the goods to yourself. And then the response of um, Abraham is the focus of our worship tonight. Are we together? The response of Abraham is the focus of our worship. Because until you begin to see God the way Abraham saw God, you are not going to really be free in this generation and in the generation to come. Is that okay? Genesis 14, 22. What was the response of Abraham? Other people would have considered that as an opportunity to be rich. Isn't it? Huh? It destroyed five kings that came to capture people in Sodom. Five kings collected everything they have stolen back. Those people actually stole from five great cities. So if you value what Abraham collected back, you will know it's in millions of dollars in today's estimation. So when they came, what he would have said, well, I got all the men and goods by my sword by my sweat. So officially and legally, they were his. Am I correct? But the, the king of Sodom came and said, don't worry. Just give me the people you have rescued and take all the goods to yourself. That's an offer that 
people that have no revelation will have jumped at. Did you get what I'm saying now? People that have no revelation of God as their source and as what we want to worship him for tonight. They would have jumped at that offer. But you know what Abraham said? Verse 22. And Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and the earth, that I will not take from a thread, even to a shoe lashet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abraham rich. You know what Abraham was saying? The God I serve can make me rich. I'm not going to touch anything, the men and the goods. I have lifted my hands unto God. I'm never going to touch it. What other people saw as an opportunity, it, Abraham said, I'm not going to touch it because I don't want you to turn around later and say, I have made Abraham rich. If not for me, Abraham wouldn't have been rich. That's a man that has a revelation of God as his source. He didn't put his trust in things. He didn't put his trust in things. He put in trust in God. If you are going to go far with your family and your generation, you must develop that quality. Did you hear what I'm saying now? Hello? You must develop that what? That quality. Some of us, especially those of us who are young parents, your children are still in maybe nursery school, primary school. And then you have good salary. And then you believe you don't really need anything. How much is the school fees of my children? My salary and that of my wife can take care of it. That is foolishness. Needs are coming that your salary will not be able to handle. It is a season for you to begin to develop your faith in God, never in your salary. Once you choose to depend upon your salary, you have limited your life forever. You have limited. Don't get things from government. Learn to develop the quality of getting things from God. Is somebody hearing me now? Oh, the demands of life will you can never have all the money you will ever need in life. It's good to save, but that you can never save for your future. <laughs> you can never save for your destiny. So, you must have a revelation of God as your source. So Abraham said, I'm not going to touch anything. He said, I've lifted up my hands unto the Lord, the Most High God. Somebody said, the Most High God. Somebody say the possessor of heaven and the earth. Is that your God? The one who owns the heaven? The one who owns the earth? Is there anything he cannot give you? Hello? Is that your God? May you have a revelation of that God as your God. So he said, I'm not going to touch anything so that you won't think that you made me rich. My God is enough to, for, to make me rich. What a fate. What a revelation. Are you hearing me now? What a fate. What a revelation. If your salary, your job is what you trust, it has become your God. And if you are planning the future based on your salary, and your effort, you are, I can assure you, you will have a very small, inconsequential future. Did you hear that now? I can assure you, you will have a very small, inconsequential future. Learn to develop your trust in God as your source. Salaries are channels, the things you see physically are channels. Human help are channels. Nobody should stand in the place of God in your life. Nothing, no, not, not money you stand in the place of God in your life. The money you can't give to God has become your God. Is that okay? Is that okay? So you must develop your faith in God. How many of us want to go far? Sure you want to go far? Develop 
your revelation of God as your word, as your source. There is nothing you will ever need. There is nothing the future will ever bring that God can give you. He's the possessor of heaven and the earth. Look at First Chronicles chapter 29. First Chronicles, I had to do that explanation so that you can have the revelation of the God you are worshipping tonight. And I want you to worship him. He's the God that leads us into an unknown future. Nobody can say I know tomorrow. But he alone knows tomorrow. And he, the one that knows tomorrow is your source. Your family is secured. Your generation is safe. No matter the turn of event in life, you're on the, you're on the safe side. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? <laughs> I've seen people walking in mighty, mighty place that they thought that, that nothing would shake me. The first shaking that came was that they sacked them. And the company itself collapsed. And they begin to run helter-skelter. Beloved, don't ever look to your job. Don't ever look to your salary. Don't ever look to any man. Develop the discipline of seeing God as your source. Tell somebody, God is my source. Beyond what you say, practice it in life. That's when the future is guaranteed. Because needs will come. Needs that you can't handle. That your brain can't handle. That your connection can't handle. That your money can't handle. Needs will come. Needs that you did not even fathom. Needs that you did not even prepare for. Certain needs that will come as you move into the future. The need of your husband, the need of your wife, the need of your children, the need of your family, the needs will come. But when God becomes your source, the future is secure. Are you hearing me now? Learn how to collect things from God. Learn how to develop your faith. Learn how to, you will work with God by faith. Learn how to develop your faith. Don't put your faith on what you can see. Don't trust men. Don't trust the human system. Is somebody hearing me now? Don't trust the human system. I've seen billionaires become paupers. I've seen richest people within five minutes turn to the poorest people. Don't let what you have be the idol you are worshipping. Don't be proud because of anything. Let God be your source. And depend upon him. And trust him. And serve him. And be willing to give him anything he asks of you. Because he will never allow you to, to outgive him. How many of you believe that God is not a taker, he's a giver? When he asks you to give, it is because he wants to have a reason to give to you. And you can never outgive him. Praise God. I say praise God. One of my friends will say that, that that's too low. We say that's too low. Don't say hallelujah as if you, they woke you up from sleep. When I say praise God, say hallelujah to show that you are really following, you are alive. That is not that somebody is trying to wake you up from sleep. I say praise God. All right. First Corinthians chapter 29. I'm reading verse 10 to 12. May you have that revelation tonight. First Chronicles 29, 10 to 12. Wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. And David said, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel our Father forever and ever. You see that revelation? Our Father. Do you know what a father does for his children? Huh? You do know what a father does for his children? David had a revelation of God as his father. Not for a few years. He said forever and ever. Is there anybody who would take God like that? Somebody say, my father forever and ever. Say, God is my father forever and ever. Either I'm there, he will take, those of you that are parents, either you are there, he will take care of your children. Either you are not there, he will take care of your children. 
He is the owner father. You are the caretaker father. Is somebody hearing me? Why do you want to kill yourself? The owner father is there. Hey, 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 hey. If I die now, what will happen to the children? That is when they will prosper the most. Because the owner father does not die. Just make sure you do your part as a caretaker father and hand them over to their owner father. Is somebody hearing me now? Praise God. Look at verse 11. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is one. Including your life, including your money, including your properties, including your children. Those children that you say, my children, my children, my children, including you yourself, including your unborn descendants. They are thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou hast exalted as head above all. How many of you worship God tonight? If you really understand God, you won't have any fear for tomorrow. You won't have any anxiety for tomorrow. How are my children going to make it? They will make it. Just do your part. Just play your role. Do your own responsibility. Oh, they will make it. Did you hear that? And trust God for everything. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Praise God. So, tonight we are going to worship God at six things. Number one, don't forget you are standing in the gap for yourself, for your family. For yourself, for your family. Worship God, number one, as the most high God. The most high God. Is that okay? The most high God. Okay? We used to have a song, highest in the heavens, highest authority. Highest in the heavens, highest authority. Greater than all, you are greater than, greater than all. All you are greater, Lord, greater than all. All you are greater, Lord, greater than all. Highest in the heavens, highest in the heavens. I'll just sing it one time. Oh, highest authority. Highest in the heavens. Highest in the heavens. Highest, highest authority. You are greater than, greater than all. You are greater than, greater than all. Oh, my God, you are greater than, greater than all. Lord, you are greater than, greater than all. So you are worshipping God tonight as the most high God. One who is greater than any other thing. Most high, most high, most high. Number two, you worship him as the possessor of heaven and earth. There is nothing in heaven, there is nothing on earth that he cannot give you. Is that okay? Many of us are pursuing men that can't give us anything. But we don't pursue God that can give us everything. It is a deception of the devil. And I pray that you are going to rise above that deception tonight. Are you hearing me? I'm praying that you will rise above that deception tonight. That you will stop pursuing men who can give you anything. You will start pursuing God who can give you what? Everything. Is that okay? Believe that? That God can give you everything? Do you believe that man cannot give you anything? Okay? Praise God. So he's the possessor of heaven and earth. When we have a revelation of God, we, nobody will beg you to serve God. But it's, it is a deception of the devil that wants to believe that man can do more than what God can do for you. But I believe God that you are going to come over that deception tonight. Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth will do what? Will make you free. Number three, serve God, I mean worship God tonight as the owner of greatness. The owner of greatness. 
Umlo niti tobi is the owner of greatness, the owner of power, the owner of victory. He's in his custody. And he gives it to his children. The owner of victory, the owner of glory, the owner of glory, the owner of majesty, and the owner of the kingdom. All right? Is the owner of greatness, is the owner of power, is the owner of uh, victory, is the owner of glory, is the owner of majesty, and is the owner of the kingdom. Are you hearing me now? The days are coming that we are going, we are not going to ask anything from God for a whole eight days than to just teach and practice how to worship God. That day is coming. Hello? We won't be lumping our worship with the other service. Praise God. Did you get that? It's the owner of what? Greatness, power, victory, glory, majesty, and the kingdom. Number four. Worship him as the God who is exalted as head above all. The God who is exalted as head above all. The God who is exalted as head above all. One thing I know is that is always a connection between the word and worship. The word and worship. When you have the revelation of the word, you will have a revelation of worship. The word of God will tell you who God is. And worship is worshiping, I mean, praising him for who he is. The God who is exalted as head above all. Number five. Worship him as the source of riches and honor. Riches and honor. The two are in God. Many of you want riches? Do you know that are riches and dishonor? That are riches and disgrace? That are riches and contempt? How many of you want riches and disgrace? Riches and contempt? Riches and dishonor? Do you want that? That's what the devil gives. The devil gives people riches and disgrace. Riches and contempt. Riches and dishonor. But God gives riches and what? And honor. How many of you want riches and honor? The God you are worshipping tonight is the source of riches and honor. Is that okay? And number six, worship God tonight as the maker of great men and the giver of strength. The maker, the Bible says, it is with him, it is with him, make great. Good, that's the word I want to use. It is with him to make great. It determines who will be great. Greatness is his, is his, it determines greatness. So you worship him tonight as the maker of great men. Those who are truly great, God made them. Nobody can say I'm self-made. Nobody is self-made. Beloved, I am God-made. Hello? True greatness is God. God made. So he's the maker of great men and the giver of strength. Did you get that? He's the maker of great men and the giver of strength. Let's rise up on our feet. There are ways you sing to God and you sing out, you sing away your fears. What he is is what we are singing in song. That's a good song, isn't it? What he is. When you sing, you sing away your sorrow, you sing away your fear, you sing away the, the, the doubt and the, and the fear of tomorrow. You sing because you are dealing with the one who alone is God. Nobody shares that with him. He is God alone. He is God above everything. He is the Alewile She. He is the I am that I am. I want you to go before him tonight and worship him. Alright? Did you get that? Take your notes. I have shown you things you are to worship him for. 
and don't keep quiet. Bring words to this God. Bring words to him. Call him what he is. Acknowledge him for who he is and who he is in your life. Let's worship him. Tonight you are worshiping him on behalf of yourself and your generation yet unborn. Bringing worship to the king of kings. Worshiping God as the most high God. The most high God. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I give you praise tonight. I worship you, my king. You are the most high God. Nobody can be as high as you. You are higher than anything. Higher than anything. Higher than anything. Higher than anything. Higher than any situation. Higher than any problem. Higher than any condition. Higher in all generation, you, my God, you are the most high God. I worship you tonight. I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you the reward of my tongue, the reward of my lips, the fruit of my lips tonight. I declare you are the most high God. Blessed, O oh Lord, be your holy name. The most high God. The most high God. The most high God. The most high God. The God who will, not, who will not receive permission from anybody before he moves is the Most High God. The Most High God, I worship you, Lord. Blessed, O oh Lord, be your holy name tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The God of heaven, the God of Israel, my God, the Most High God. Lord, I worship you tonight as the possessor of heaven and earth. You are the owner of heaven. As big as heaven is. You are the owner of the earth. As big as the earth is. No man owns anything. No man owns anything. No man owns anything. You own everything. The possessor of heaven and earth. And you give it to whoever you want. Oh Lord I worship you tonight. I give you all the glory. As the, as the most high God. As the possessor of heaven and earth. I have no fear because you, my God, the God of my family, God of my generation, you are the possessor of heaven and earth. You are the possessor of heaven and earth. Blessed, O oh Lord, be your holy name. You alone are God. O oh Lord, I worship you. O oh Lord, I worship you from the bottom of my heart tonight. O oh Lord, I give you all the glory on behalf of myself, on behalf of my family on behalf of my generation, on behalf of my descendants yet unborn, I worship you as the possessor of heaven and earth. There is nothing in heaven and earth that you don't hold. There is nothing in heaven and earth that you cannot give to me. I worship you. I give you all the glory. I worship you tonight as the owner of greatness. You are the owner of greatness. Greatness is from you. You are the owner of power. Power, power. No power can harass you. You are the owner of power. I worship you as the owner of victory. Victory. Blessed, O oh Lord. The God of victory. The owner of victory. The God of victory. I worship you tonight as the owner of glory. You are the owner of glory. Oh, glory belongs to you. Blessed, O oh Lord, be your holy name. You are the owner of majesty. Majesty. You are the owner of majesty. Be thou exalted, my God. Be thou exalted, the God of my generation. The God of my family. The God of my descendants. The God of my unborn lineage. You are the owner of majesty. You are the owner of the kingdom. The kingdom is in your hand. The kingdom is under your control. Blessed, O oh Lord, be your holy name. Blessed, O oh Lord, be your holy name. Zebaladoza, I worship you tonight as the God who is exalted as head above all. You are head above all. You are exalted as head above all. Nothing can compare with you. Nothing can stand in your way. Nothing can come over you. You are head above all. You are head above all. You are head above all. I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you all the worship tonight. I give you all the honor tonight. I give you all the adoration tonight. On behalf of myself, my children, my wife, my family, my generation, my 
generation yet unborn. I worship you as the source of riches and honor. You are the source of riches and honor. All riches and honor comes from you. All riches and honor comes from you. True riches and honor comes from you. Blessed, O Lord, be your holy name. I worship you tonight, O God, as the maker of great men and the giver of strength. Blessed, O Lord, be your holy name, the maker of great men and the giver of strength. You are the giver of strength. Weakness is not in your record. Weakness is not in your nature. You are God. You are good. You are great. You are God. You are good. You are great. Blessed, O Lord, be your holy name. I give you praise tonight. I give you glory tonight. I give you honor tonight. I give you adoration tonight. You are wonderful and mighty. You are gracious and benevolent. The God of my family, the God of my destiny, the God of my generation, the God of my unborn children, I worship you, my Father. I give you all the glory. You are wonderful and gracious. Blessed, O Lord, be your holy name. Zebalandre Musalabai, Ete Dema Zadoy, Eda Baladeste, Zedema Zazo, Esa Sada Mayada, Andramala Sasadaya, Rebaliste, Ete Demos to Limbroma Zado, Mandrama Sanders to Libra Mazadi, Ezede Yede de Mosede, Yede de Mosede, Yede de Esa Sada Mazada Malandoste, Jimbruma Stalunde, Endre Mosto de Yede. Era balandro malazadoza, zabali, zabali de de mozadaya, rabalado mustende libro mashanda, endra masonde este de moriba baba baba bala bada mada bada, jemba las tonde celebra madema, osa sada ya de marado do do mozade, era balende malade mozede de moselia, jembro masando, stoli rabade zede, era balado do ete de mazada. Rabala do stelim bramazai, e restende mutim bromasandoye, e radoste, e zaba, e de de moza, de ye, e de de mode, e de de madamaya, Rabala de de moza, de e rabala sasa do stete ye de brumasande. Blessed, O Lord, be your holy name. What a God you are. In Jesus' name we worship. Let's rise up on our feet. When you succeed in worshipping God, the heavens will be open unto you. So every time we use in worshipping God is not a waste. When you succeed in worshipping God, from the bottom of your heart, the heavens will open unto you. Is that okay? I want to pray for you that the anointing for worship will rest upon everyone. Yeah. It will not just be the anointing that you carry alone. It will be the anointing upon your family. Yeah. It will be the anointing upon your generation. Yeah. Sit down. Tonight we will take the number six divine provision. The divine provision for family redemption and renewal. Provision number six. I believe God is going to tell you many things by his spirit. As we pray tonight. Write this down. The removal of lifeless and fruitless branches from your family tree. The remover of lifeless and fruitless branches from your family tree. When Jesus died and rose again, what it does for our family as far as redemption and renewal is concerned is that it makes the provision for the removal of lifeless and fruitless branches in your family tree available. It made that provision available. 
that your family is like a tree in the spirit. When you check the Bible very well, most of the places that the Bible is talking about tree, it's not that God was directly interested in trees as trees. But he was using tree to illustrate the destiny of families. That different kinds of tree that the Bible mentioned. But God was using tree to illustrate family. Every family is like a tree that has the root. Yes or no? That has the stem. That has the branches. That had the leaves. That had the fruit. Those are the, about five different parts of a tree. Somebody said the root. Somebody said the stem. Somebody said the branches. Somebody said the leaves. Somebody said the fruits. Those are the five things that you have in a tree. And if God is using a tree to illustrate family, it means family has root. Family has stem. Family has branches. Family has leaves. And family has fruits. In the course of family renewal and redemption program that we are going on, I've spoken about the fruit. You remember? I've spoken about the root. Alright? We're focusing on the stem and the branches tonight. Because the real truth is this. It is the branches that carry the fruit. Yes or no? So when the branches are lifeless, when the branches are weak, they won't carry the fruit. Right? Praise God. Let me give you an example. My own grandfather has two wives. Are you following what I'm saying now? My grandmother in the paternal side and then another woman. So if you take that man as a tree, it means he has how many legs? Talk to me. It means he has two basic legs. Because I want you to be able to draw the schematic diagram of your family tree. So that you can locate yourself in that diagram. And begin to take decision on what will happen from, from where you are downward. You may not be able to control what happened before you came. But you must be able as a believer to control in the spirit what happens from you downward. I have drawn my own family tree several times. And I have placed myself in that tree. So it has helped me to know what came before me. And helped me to demand what should happen after me. Is somebody here in a minute? It is a duty I owe generation on board. I must do things that make life easier for them. Did you hear what I'm saying now? I must do things that make life easier for my descendants. That is when they will look at you and have a good memory of you. The battle I should fight today, I should fight it. If I leave it to them, it will be the wickedness of the highest order. Don't leave battles to your children. Fight the battles. Win the battle. Hand over the laurels to them. Let it be easier for them in the spirit and physical to kick off. Because that is what will help them to go far. I used to know a man that I passed off some years back. And he said, my father didn't do this for me. My father didn't do this for me. My father. So I, I'm not going to do it for any child. One day I told him, sir, that's foolishness. That's foolishness. If your father didn't do it for you, didn't you suffer for it? Did it not affect your life? Did it not slow down your own speed? 
Why do you want to pass the same liability to your own children? I said, with all due respect, that is foolishness. That's not, that's not wisdom. Unfortunately, the man didn't listen. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? My father didn't send me to school, so I'm not going to send any child to school. That's a hopeless father talking. My father didn't take care of me, so I'm not going to take care of anybody. That's, that's, that's foolishness. My father just said everybody should struggle on his own. So, up to where I am today, I struggle on my own. So, you also, you children, go and struggle on your own. An aborted pregnancy is better than the man talking. Why will you, what, 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 what will you say, why will you say you live? If the people that lived after you, that you invited to this world, find it more difficult to live than you. So, locate your family tree because we are going to pray some prayers tonight. And I want you to release your faith. I will not be a disappointment to my generation. I will not be a disappointment to my descendants. In the name of Jesus. How many of you know that Abraham faced the fire? So it made it easier for Isaac to start off. Yes or no? How many of you also know that Isaac faced the remaining fire? Not the one that Abraham faced. No. So it made it easier for Jacob to start off. How many of you know that Jacob faced the fire? So it made it easier for Joseph to take off. Let it be easier for the next generation to take off. Create a good name for them. When they hear your son name, don't let them say, eh? Create a good name for them. You do hear what I just said? Praise God. Amen. Are you getting something tonight? So my own family tree, my grandfather, I don't know about his own father. But I know about, I know, I know about him. And so there are two legs now. Right? One of the legs is for my grandmother in the paternal side. And my grandmother has six legs. Somebody says six legs. So which means he has six children. Are you, are you imagining the picture? Alright? My own father is the number fifth leg. Number five leg. Did you get what I'm saying now? <laughs> and then, five legs has, the number 50 leg has eight legs. Somebody say eight legs. So he has eight children. Alright? I am number third leg. Did you hear what I'm saying now? So I can always locate myself. And then I have three legs. I may not know what happened before me. But I must put my feet on the ground. What happened from me downward? Greatness has started. Did you hear that? There may have been poverty before me. But prosperity will start from me. I'm talking my own. What are you saying? Eh? There may have been mediocrity before me. But excellence will start from me. There may have been darkness before me. But light will start from me. I want everybody, no matter how young you are, no matter how old you are, locate yourself in your family tree. Perhaps when you get home, go and draw it. Draw it, let it be a full diagram. Put the names and all that and then place it somewhere and let it be your prayer focus. Did you hear that now? Uh, things must turn for the positive. Amen. Things must turn for the positive. Amen. There won't be slave in my generation again. There won't be paupers in my generation again. Did you get that now? There are leaders in my generation. 
that are that are great men in my generation. Great women in my generation. Are you going to pray tonight? Okay, so this is the first prayer we're going to pray. I have done my explanation tonight. So for the next 40 minutes, we are going to pray. How many of you want to pray? Sure, you want to pray? Amen. I'm giving you a pattern. Let the family redemption and renewal program continue after Sunday in your own life and in your family. Everything we did for eight days is a pattern for you. Don't let the prayer stop. Okay? Don't say we are finished it until July next year again. You know we have family redemption and renewal service July towards the end of July every year. Don't let it be up to that time before. Walk in that reality from now on. The first prayer we are going to pray. Amen. It's prayer with explanation. I want you to say after me. As from today. I command. My family tree. Begin to sprout again. That's the prayer. I command my family tree begin to sprout again. I see in the spirit a picture of a tree that is already cut and all the leaves have withered. And the tree looks like it is hopeless. But I saw water and rain begin to fall. And I saw that fresh leaves begin to come out. And the Lord said, that is the picture of what he is doing with us from now on. The tree that is dry, that has no branches, that the branches are lifeless and fruitless, and the, and the leaves are withered. God say, there will be a, a rain falling now. And that tree will sprout again. Yeah. Whatever they have written off about you and your family. God is going to do more than you think. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? And that's what you are joining your faith to. It's not that God will just do it. It is available. Release your faith and connect with it. Your family tree will sprout again. Yeah. That is too low. I say your family tree will sprout again. Amen. If you believe it, I want you to rise up. Say after me, you my family tree. You, my family tree. I command you in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Sprout, again. sprout again. You understand the picture? A tree that has no branches, the branches are dry, the leaves are withered, but at the instance of water, it sprouts again. Leaves came out. More leaves. Greener leaves. Branches came out. Fruits came out. It has not ended for you. It has not ended for your family. It is coming up again. Are you hearing me now? Are you going to pray that prayer? Yes, Say after me, you my family tree. You, my family tree. I command you in the name of Jesus. You, Sprout, again. Sprout again. Open your mouth and pray. Sprout again. Sprout again. Sprout again. Sprout again. Sprout again. In the name of Jesus. I command my family tree to sprout again. Sprout again. Sprout again. Sprout again. Sprout again, sprout again, sprout again, sprout again. Zebala do Zedea, Ebro Masalaba de Mazai, Jembro Mastele Marando Stolindra Masande. Sprout again. The good things that they think can never happen, let it begin to happen from now. A new beginning. Sprout again. 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 
a baliste de yede. I connect my family tree to the water of life. Sprout again. I connect my family tree to the water of life. The water of the word of God. The water of the Holy Ghost. Sprout again. In the name of Jesus. A new beginning of freshness. A new beginning. Let it happen. Let it begin to manifest. My family tree begin to sprout again, begin to sprout again, begin to sprout again, begin to sprout again, begin to sprout again. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. We are going to pray that prayer again. What I wrote down here. No matter the injury that witches, wizard, familiar spirit have done to, the, to my family tree. You know there are some trees that have sustained some injury that if care is not taken, it can never sprout again. Yes or no? How many of you agree with me that there are some trees that they have really injured that tree? There are some of the trees that they remove the back of the stem. They remove the back of the stem. They cut everything down. And the tree is hopeless. And if, if care is not taken, that tree is so terribly injured that it can never sprout again. No matter the rain, it won't sprout. How many of you have seen a tree like that before? That has been injured over the years. That even if rain is falling, like it's not going to sprout again. It's dead. But listen to me. Your family tree will sprout again. Yeah. I want you to, I don't want you to look at the hopelessness of years. It is a new dawn. That's what God asked me to tell you. It's a new dawn. God can do more in your future than whatever the devil has done in your past. Are you hearing me now? Don't Give your focus to the bad things that the devil has done in the past. When you give your focus to the bad things that the devil has done in the past, you will become hopeless. But give your focus to the good things that God is promising to do in your future. I tell you, beloved, the great future starts now. The glorious future starts for you now. The Bible says we should not remember the old things. He said, behold, I will do a new thing. Is that not what he says? It will make water to flow in the wilderness. It will create a road in the wilderness. And it will make water to flow in the desert. The same God of heaven that sustained Abraham and all his flock and all his herds of sheep and cow and cattle in a desert land after Lot had departed from him, taking the, the richest part of Sodom. Oh, that God is alive. I say that God is alive. Don't look at your history. Look at your future. Don't let your history destroy your future. It doesn't matter who, you, who what has happened to you before that is bad. From now on, Grace will fall upon your life. Grace will fall upon your family. Good things will happen to you. Just make sure you play your own part. All the instruction that has been coming since Sunday. The one that is your own part. Do it and release your faith. And you will see what God will do for you. Say after me. No matter the damage or the injury done by witches. Say after me, say after me. No matter the injury done to my family tree by the witches, by the wizard, by the familiar spirit, by the forces of darkness, by my own mistake as an Ad with Adamic nature. Did you get that now? You, my family tree, I command you in the name of Jesus, sprout again. How many of you pray that prayer with faith? 
mo sa fe kadura yen yi e to ba ti yi e wa le gba no matter which is have done in injury to some of our family tree sad and familiar spirit they've done some injury to some of our family tree our own carelessness and adamic nature has also done some injury to that family tree do you agree and then forces of darkness have done some injury but beloved no matter the injury that they have that has been done to my family tree i command my family tree sprout again you know why it will sprout again jesus rose on the third day he was planted on friday he rose on sunday the same power that brought jesus from the dead is at work here are you ready rise up on your feet and let us pray this prayer this will be a divining point for all our families say after me no matter the injury that witches wizard familiar spirit the forces of darkness my faulty foundation my adamic nature of sin has done to my family tree I command you my family tree in the name of Jesus Christ sprout again open your mouth and begin to pray open your mouth and pray masala bade mazai yebaliste de 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 mazada no matter the injury that the witches have done against my family tree no matter the manipulations of the devil no matter the witchcraft oppression that has worked in my family before no matter the 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 the, the injury done to my ancestry no matter my faulty foundation no matter my own mistake and errors in life no matter the the ignorance the 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 the, the the danger and the damage that ignorance has done to my family. Ah, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you, my family tree, sprout again. Sprout again. Sprout again. Sprout again. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead on the third day is at work. By that power, by that reality, by that authority, I command my family tree, sprout again. Sprout again. Sprout again, sprout again, sprout again, sprout again, sprout again, sprout again, sprout again. No more liability in my luggage. No more liability in my luggage. No more liability in my luggage. No more demonic liability in my luggage. In the name of Jesus, I won't carry moral burden again. I won't carry moral barrier again. I won't continue to suffer the the consequence of mistakes of yesterday again. I command you sprout again. 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 In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Say after me. You heard the cry of Samson. I say say after me. You heard the cry of Samson. And you cause his ear to grow again. Lord, no matter the injury done to my family tree, Lord, no injury, Lord, my family tree. I command life into my family tree again. Did you see that picture in the spirit? Huh? They took away the air of Samson. Oh yes, because, because of his carelessness. Oh yes, because of his lust. Because of his sin. Because of his mistake. Because of his ignorance. Oh yes, because of his disobedience and rebellion. Oh, many of us are like that. Did you hear that? He took away his, his ear, the symbol of the anointing. He took it away. He became another man. He took away his eyes. But at the last minute, God heard his voice. He said, Lord, let my ear grow again. 
if he had not asked to die with his enemy, he wouldn't have died. How many of you agree with me that the God that made the air to begin to grow can give him back his two eyes? But because he was limited in, in, in knowledge, he allowed the, the frustration of the moment to overwhelm me. So he said, let me just die with my enemy. Listen to me. I am not dying with my enemy. The God that make air to grow can make the eyes to come. Can make the tree to sprout again. No matter the damage that has been done. So we have a better understanding than Samson now. Say after me, you heard the cry of Samson. And you made his ear to grow again. Lord, no matter the damage done to my family tree, I command life into my family tree. Are you ready to pray? Let's rise up on our feet. If you can't flow, if you can't write everything, you can see it on the screen. Did you get that? Hey, amen. What is important for you to write is you command life into your family tree. That's okay. The other ones are explanations. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Say after me, Lord. Lord. You heard the cry of Samson. And you made his ear to grow again. No matter the damage done to my family tree, I command life into my family tree in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Zebala dama dama zadoya, rambala stonde marasto limbro madeza, jebaliste de 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 mozode. Whatever may have been my mistake in the past. Whatever may have been my foolishness in the past, whatever be my, my sin, my ignorance, my error, my mistake, my moral baggages in the past. Oh, you heard the cry of Samson and you caused his ear to grow again. Lord, no matter the damage that sin has done, that Satan has done, that sickness has done, that the devil has done to my family tree, I command life again into my family tree. I command life. My family tree receive life. 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 Pray, 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 pray. Whatever may be my mistake, whatever may be my carelessness, whatever may be the sin of the past. No matter the chances I have given to the devil, whatever injury and damage has been done to my family tree, by sin, by Satan, by sickness, I command life into my family tree again. In the name of Jesus, I command life into my family tree again. 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 Zebala deba deba zere Embro masando stoli pra malandro stelendre jemba andre mose sede ye de 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 mose de ye de I command life again life again life 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 into my family tree life 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 life, life again let life take over my family tree the life of the word of God the life and the blood of Jesus let it flow into my family tree again let it flow into my family tree again let it flow into my family tree again in the name of Jesus. Masese de yede. Beginning from me, downward. Life, 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 life in the name of Jesus. Life in the word of God. Life in the Holy Ghost. Let it flow into my family tree again from me, downward. Esese de yede. Rababala badama de madema zai. Jembro masando stoliadri reba ba de masando jende mosto de bruma sasa de yede. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Say after me by the word of the Lord, by the Spirit of the Lord. I command my family tree branches 
to flourish again. When the branches are dry, the hope of fruit is gone. Because it is the branches that carry the fruits. Yes or no? Yes or no? It is the branches that what? That carry the fruit. When you are talking about branches, you are talking about your children. Did you get what I'm saying now? So you must understand what you are praying for now. When the branches are sick, there is no hope of fruit. When the branches are sick, there is no hope of fruit. But when the branches come back again, there is hope for fruit. And once there is fruit, there is continuity. Somebody say continuity. Somebody say continuity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So I want you to pray tonight. Say after me by the word of the Lord. By the spirit of God. Let my family tree branches begin to flourish. I command. Don't say let. I say I command. Use the authority in the name of Jesus. Don't say when you say let, it's at somebody's discretion. Let it be at your own discretion by the authority of the name of Jesus. Did you hear me now? By the word of the Lord, by the spirit of the Lord, I command my family tree branches flourish again. Did you get that? Huh? Flourish again. Flourish again. Are you ready? Let's rise up on our feet. Say again, by the word of the Lord, by the spirit of the Lord I command my family three branches flourish again open your mouth and begin to pray by the word of by the spirit of the Lord I command my family three branches flourish again flourish again flourish 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 all my branches begin to 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 flourish in the name of Jesus Zebalada Azazoya all my branches begin to flourish 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 all my branches begin to flourish. All my branches begin to flourish. All my branches begin to flourish. Esa sadayada. Esa sadayada. Yembro mosonde. Lebro made masala. Yebaliste de mososode. All my branches begin to flourish. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, let me give you a better concept of that prayer. Listen to this. As a parent, I have branches. Yes or no? As a child also, or a son in my family, I am also a branch. Did you get that now? As a parent, I have branches. As a son in the family, I am also a what? A branch. When you get back home, go and study Genesis 49. Jacob had 12 branches. Because then they don't count to women. That was why Dinah was not included in the blessings and the record of the prophetic blessing that Jacob gave. But now we come to women now under the new covenant. Did you hear? It is not a mistake that women is a woman is the first person to see the resurrected Christ. So the new covenant women are on the lead. 
There is nothing that say uh okunle lomo kilo berry. Omo gidi. Did you hear? Omo gidi. Any any believer that is say women are not a, I tell you he's not born again. If he's born again, he will know that in in Christ Jesus we are one. We are the same. In fact, you agree with me that Jesus gave more attention to women more than men. Are you hearing me now? So, when God gives you children that are female, you must value, you must value and train them. When God gives you children that are male, value them and train them. There is nothing better in a male child than a female child. Is that okay? I believe you know that. Okay. So what I want to say is that in that prophetic blessing, Genesis chapter 49, that 12 children, yes or no? How many of you agree with me that the branch of Joseph is the leading master branch? Look at the prophetic blessing that went to the branch of Joseph. How many of you know that Joseph had a double portion in Israel? How many of you know? Because Jacob said, these two children that you have before I came here, they are mine. My name and the name of my God will be named after them. Did you hear that? They are mine. And you know Jacob was the patriarch, was the living legend and the carrier of the blessing. Later, I will tell you when Jacob had, when Joseph had that his father was sick and he knew that it is, it is uh, a leaf to go. You know, when, when civil servants want to get out of service, when they want to retire, they give them leaf. Am I correct? And they call it leaf to what? Leaf to go. There are some sicknesses that are leaf to go. You don't call them sickness in the real sense of it. It is just a way of getting out of this body. He knew that. When he was going to see his father, you know what he did? He carried his two children. Because he knew this is the man carrying the baton of the blessing. This is the man carrying the baton of the blessing. That that man is about to pass the blessing. He took his children down. And then he said, who are these? He said, these are the two children that God gave me. I said, ah. I never thought I would see your face again. But now I'm seeing your children. And he said, bring them to me. Are you hearing me now? And they brought to him. And Joseph arranged in such a way that the right hand of his father would be on Manasseh's head. And the left hand of the, of the father would be on Ephraim. Because Manasseh is the older one. Ephraim is the youngest one. And the eyes of the father is failing. He couldn't see well again. But prophetically, the man did like this. Hello. <laughs> the man did like this. And make sure his right hand is upon Ephraim, which is the youngest. And then the left hand is upon Manasseh. And he began to release the blessing. And Joseph said, that, that's it. No, it's not correct. It's not. This is the Let your hand. He said, I know. I know what I'm doing. Manasseh too will be great. But this is the master branch. This is the leading branch. This one too will be great, but this is the leading branch. It's like he's saying, just as you are number 11, and you are the leading branch. Ah, 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 ah. For Baurie Mobile. Number 11. What Kalati? Number 1, number 2, number 3, number 4, number 11. Became the leading branch. Are you here? He said, why are you doing? I will feed you. It's the master branch, the leading branch. Ah, your own branch in your father's house will not wither away. Amen. Your own branch in your father's house will not wither away. Amen. 
Your own branch in your father's house will not die. Amen. Your own branch in your father's house will become a big tree. Amen. With mighty shade. Amen. That many people will come and take cover under it. In the name of Jesus. Rise up on your feet. I want just give you a concept because when you are talking of branch, many people think it's only our children alone. No. As a parent, you have children. The children are your branches. But you yourself, you are a branch in your father's house. Allah had a yellow go. Amen. They won't be able to do anything until they see you. Amen. They will say, let us wait for him to come. Amen. Let us wait for him to come. Amen. Let us wait for him to come. Amen. Every garment of poverty, I take authority over them. Amen. Glory and grace will flow from your branch. Amen. Glory and grace will flow from your branch. Amen. Nobody will be able to push your branch aside. Amen. Among the branches in your father's house, your branch will speak louder. Amen. You know there are levels that won't get to that nobody is going to argue again. Are you hearing me now? Nobody is going to argue again. When Joseph told his brother, I am Joseph, that you sold into Egypt. Is my father still okay? I'm sure there will be dead silence. Yes or no? Because the Joseph they knew was the Joseph that was pathetically begging them, please don't sell me off. That's the picture. The picture of Joseph in their mind was the picture of hopelessness, the picture of helplessness, the picture of somebody who is desperate and they are laughing. Sell him. Sell him. Sell him. And they sold him off. And they shared the money. And they sat down. And they ate. Took, I mean, gave themselves a party. And they removed his cloth. Cloth of many colors. And they killed a goat and used the blood, used the cloth to clean it and then show his father. That's the picture of the Joseph they knew. But this Joseph is a divinely repackaged Joseph. A branch that has sprouted again at the scent of water. That, that will be your experience. Let's pray this prayer. All those ones are prophetic release that are sideways and release your faith for them. Oh, Nijia. In your column, as of my forum, and saying, Nile Baba, me. Don't fight for position anywhere. It is foolishness. When God finish with you, nobody will contend with you. You are, you, are, you are stressing yourself. It's not by you. It's by the God of heaven. People will argue with you. But when God is through with you, <laughs> everybody will say, Augusta, we, we concur. Yes, I'm going to this on you. He does say, I'm going to say, did you hear me? Because God has finished with you. Allow God to be through with you. Oh, if I give this, did you hear me? Oh, if I give this, let God be through with you. And the God of heaven is the one we are serving here. Every one of you standing here and sitting here and hearing my voice and connecting your faith with this. In your father's house, you will be at the forefront. In the name of Jesus. 
We are going to pray that prayer again. Say after me. Say after me. By the word of the Lord. By the Spirit of God. My branches. Flourish again. Know that your children are branches. You yourself, you are a branch. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So when you are praying, you are praying for yourself, you are praying for your children. Listen to me. Listen to me. I want to help you if you are believing God for the fruit of the womb. Don't have any comma in praying this prayer. The way I ask you to pray it. Don't listen to the devil. Oh, did you hear what I just said? Is it how God is going to do it? I don't know. God didn't tell me to tell you how he's going to do it. But I know he's going to do it. I know he's going to do it. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Adruati monikoba. Tell me monika banikoba. Did you hear me? Those of you single, you are not yet married. Let it be. Pray it prophetically. Prophetically. So everybody should pray this prayer. Say after me by the word of the Lord. By the spirit of the Lord. My branches flourish. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and begin to pray. Zebala deba deba zada yanda, are babala sasa da yada made de moze de yede de, ese se de marandos to libro masando libro masasa daya. By the word of the Lord, by the spirit of the Lord, my branches flourish now. Flourish, 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 flourish. Flourish, 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 flourish. Zebabaliba, endre mosondeere, mandre moste de moyere. My branches flourish, 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 flourish. Zebalia. SSD Mambro Masale by Flourish, 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 flourish. Embro Masala by the Mayan Delia. Is it the Mose de Yadema Sasadaya, the Madabali Malandre Malasasa de Yadelea? Ye Maladebo Sade de Marando, said the Yede Marade, said the Yede Marade, said the Yede. Ye Malande Malasasa de Ede de Mose, said the Yede Male de Mosulia. Is Salabademo Sade de Marande Stulian Ramayana? Oh, flourish, 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 flourish. Flourish, 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 flourish. In Jesus' name we pray. Beloved, it's not about life is not about your position according to bat in your family. You may not be the firstborn. It has nothing to do with either first born, second born, third born, whatever. But it has everything to do with the purpose of God. When Joseph showed himself to his brothers and he gave them wagons and everything to go and bring his father. How many of you remember that when they were eating food the food he gave to Benjamin was five times the food he gave to the other people. Do you remember? When they were leaving to go and bring his father, he gave all his brothers 
a change of cloth. One, one each. But he gave five to Benjamin. Listen to me. When I studied the Bible to that point, the Holy Spirit told me that five is a number of grace. Grace will compensate for age. Did you hear? Grace will compensate for age. You may not be the firstborn, but grace will compensate for age. Grace will compensate for experience. Because that's what people are looking for. They say, I'm going to have less experience. I'm going to have less experience. I'm going to have less experience. Now, that is human estimation. That's not divine estimation. In life, it is not your age. It is the grace that you carry. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It's not your age. It's not first born, second born. I told you, 11, Joseph was 11th born. Number 11. So, humanly speaking, he had no position. But God gave him a position. Are you hearing me now? The God that can make number 11 to become number 1. The Bible said they were falling down before him. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? And they were not falling down to deceive him. He, he, was, he was from their will. How many of you understand that? You understand me now? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Praise God. I went to see I went to, I went to see somebody during the episode last episode, during the week. It's a highly place in this state. The first time I went to see the person, I didn't see him. So I told the gate man that call me when he come, call me so that I can come and see him. And then while I was going, of course I know the gate man is going to use money to call. So I gave him some money. Not to bribe him, but I just gave him money. And it's not possible for him to use the whole of the money to call. Are you hearing me now? The man is just uh, like like one out or talk like this. Are you hearing me now? So when I went back to see him, when I went back to see the man, there are so many people down on, down there wants to see him. And he's the, he's the gate man that is standing where Oga is at the top top. And when I showed up, he saw me say, ah, Ah, Baba mi agba. So ah, he said Baba mi agba. Muni oga ngo unwa wa lugo ni ema lobe. Unwa luke. Baba mi agba. Oh, time my hell ye. Tom ban buele ni ma banu jao ma banu jao wonro long leti ni ko ye. But Did you get that now? Right? Don't try to man prove anything. Let God work with you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I want to decree over you tonight that your branch will not cease. Your branch will never cease. Every portion of your branch, I command their release now. Every divine allocation meant for your branches, I command their release now. Every withered, weak, and sick branches, I command you to bud and flourish. I command you to bud and flourish. 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 In the name of Jesus. Let fruits begin to come from your branches. I speak as anointed tonight. 
let fruit begin to come from your branches. Fruit of grace. Fruit of greatness. Fruit of the fulfillment of promise. Fruit of leadership. Let it begin to come from your branches. Your branches shall not be fruitless. Your branches shall not be fruitless. Your branches shall not be fruitless. You will never die 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 fruitless. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. In every ramification of fruitfulness and every implication of fruitfulness, be fruitful. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. In the name of Jesus. We have two more prayers to pray and then we go tonight. Amen. Amen. Continue tomorrow morning. You know we have a morning shower tomorrow? Yes. Huh? Yes. We'll continue tomorrow morning. The prayer we're going to pray is this. Say after me, as from today. As from today. I connect my family tree. I connect my family tree. To strength. And longevity. As from today, I connect my family tree to strength, number one, to longevity, number two. We will pick it up from tomorrow. But these two, we have to pray before we go tonight. I connect my family tree to strength and what? Longevity. Strength. Let's deal with strength. Tomorrow we'll take care of weakness and short life. Is that okay? Yes, but now, strength and what? Longevity. I want you to write this down. Spiritual strength. Number one, spiritual strength. Number two, physical strength. That's what we call stamina. Stamina. Did you hear what I just said now? What is the use of having spiritual strength and having no physical stamina? No matter how anointed I am, do you know it takes a lot of stamina to fulfill my ministry? Huh? Good. Many of you know me now. I've been ministering this Sunday. It is Stamina is required. Are you hearing me now? And before that Sunday, I have been ministering ever since. In fact, there is no, Pastor Tova is still trying to remind me that, Daddy, but you said that uh, after you return from Lagos, you will go and rest. I said, don't worry. We will rest. Mommy, mommy was talking yesterday, Daddy, give me leave. Let me go and rest. I said, don't worry, we'll rest. God will give us rest. Are you hearing me now? Praise God. Eh? Why am I looking at this place? The time is coming that somebody here, people here, will, will say, daddy and mommy, go and rest in Dubai. Did you hear? Do you know you need stamina to fulfill your destiny? A sick person cannot fulfill destiny. Sickness is liability. It is time wasting. It destroys personal effort. It's like when there is dance in the mind of a lame man. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. 
But in the real sense of it, where can you show dance? Is it not leg? So the lame man is the crippled man has dance inside him. Ah, dance. Inside, but there is no leg to show you. So you need stamina. In whatever field that God has called you to and anointed you for, in ministry, in professional line, whatever, you need physical stamina. Somebody say physical stamina. You need it. You need it. So that's the strength you are connecting yourself to. People are strong spiritually, mighty spiritually, but when there's no physical stamina, it, it, it is not complete. So write physical strength. Write marital strength. You are not going to fulfill your destiny when your marriage is weak. Or when your marriage is sick. Did you hear what I'm saying now? Marital strength is a plus to the fulfillment of destiny. That's why I keep shouting and crying for all our singles that are not yet married to get it right. And every one of them that has passed through my hand, I have never compromised it. Once I see something that I know can jeopardize this future, I'm not going to manage it. I'll say it. And if the person does not agree, I remove my hand. I won't join people that are not going to succeed. Because my job does not end with joining. After the joining, my job as a pastor has just started. Because I am a stakeholder in that family. They must succeed. I'm not just a joiner. I'm a nurturer. Until that family succeed. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So when I see fundamental flaws that are terrible. And, and you, 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 the joining has not taken place. I can tell look, this thing, this thing, this thing, this thing, this thing. Especially if it is something that we cannot remedy. I'll tell you, leave that person and let's believe God for another one. It's better. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? But for those of you that have married, we will continue to continue to teach, continue to charge, continue to challenge, continue to nurture until success show up. But I believe that you will be successful. Yeah. It does not matter how bad the situation is. With the word of God and your own obedience, you will make it. Yeah. And as long as I'm your pastor, I'm not going to keep quiet. I'll keep truth because your success is what makes me happy. Your success is what gives glory to God. And your success is what the devil is fighting against. So you need marital strength. Somebody say marital strength. marital strength. I can't do what I'm doing today if I don't have a good marriage. That's the truth. Did you hear what I'm saying now? Yes, sir. If I have a woman that is giving me trouble, I'm not going to do what I'm doing today. If I don't have, have joy in my home, I'm not going to be able to do what I'm doing. Now. There are many things that you will do if your marriage is strong. And the strength of marriage is not just a function of prayer, it's a function of paying personal sacrifices. Marriage can be strong. You must walk towards it and pray towards it. Did you get what I'm saying now? Yes, Number next, calling strength. Calling strength. That's the strength you are connecting your family to. Calling strength. Calling strength. Did you get that? Yes, How many of you know that is calling strength? That is strength of your calling. Calling will be strong. You will identify your calling and you will be strong in it. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? 
You identify your calling and you'll be strong in it. Listen to me. It's not everybody that God is going to call to pulpit ministry. Like he has called me. When I say you have a call, now it doesn't mean that everybody will have to be preaching like I'm preaching. There are people that got called to family building. Family is their calling. Such people must never treat their marriage as just a marriage. They must begin to treat their marriage as a calling. There are people that got called to raise godly seed. That's their calling. Right? There are some people that got called to education arena. They are going to set up schools that will mold destinies for God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? That's their call. Such people must not treat education as just Nara and Kobo. Such people must not establish school primarily for the purpose of making money. No. They, are, they must see that school as a calling. And they are responsible to God to preserve that calling so that everybody that comes to that school will meet God before they go out. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. It's a platform for your calling. There are some people that their calling is politics. I am not one of the pastors that will say Christians should run away from politics. When Christians run away from politics, who will do it? Joseph was in politics. Daniel was in politics. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in politics. Nehemiah was in politics. Esther was in politics. Did you hear what I'm saying now? But they saw it as a, as a calling. There are some people that their calling is to finance the vision that God has. A vision. God called me and he said this is the vision. God called people and said pump money to that vision. I will give account of my own calling for the message. You will give account for your own funding. There are some people that that's their calling. You just attach you to a calling and say your own calling is just funded. Be funding it. Be funding it. Be funding it. Such people don't know. They have a revelation of the call of God upon their life. They are not waiting for pastors to come and thank them the next day. No. They are financial pillars. There are people that go call and say, your own calling is pray for this vision. Pray for this vision. Such people can pray. Are you hearing me now? May you have an understanding of your calling. But the truth is this. No matter your calling, I want to pray that your calling will not be weak. It's better not to carry a call than to have a weak calling. It's better not to carry a call than to have a weak calling. So, write down calling strength. Write again career strength. That's number what now? Number five, career strength. Somebody say career strength. Oh, God is going to raise some anointed doctors. Anointed, anointed doctors in your family. Did you hear? That before they do surgery, they will pray and speak in tongues. Anointed that there is nothing they will not be able to do. Because the hand of God is upon them. The creative hand of God. Are you hearing me now? Are you, God is going to raise some anointed lawyers from your, from your, from your family. Anointed lawyers. They won't be the devil's advocate. They will be the Lord's advocate. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? God is going to raise some anointed engineers. Are you hearing me now? Anointed architects. Anointed engineers. God is going to raise them up. God is going to raise anointed media practitioners. That... When, they, when it concerns media, media, I mean, media work, they are anointed for it. God is going to raise such people out in your family. 
God is going to rate anointed ICT gurus. ICT gurus. Are you hearing me now? Do you know what I mean by that? Anointed ICT gurus that will, that will solve a lot of problems. I mean, I mean, with ICT, with technology, that will distribute the word of God to the global audience by technology. God is raising them in your family. Oh, neighbor, one kun jomo. God is going to raise some anointed teachers at, at all level from primary to university. Teachers that have the anointing for imparting knowledge. Did you hear that? God is going to raise some anointed accountants. God is going to raise some anointed businessmen. God is going to raise anointed political leaders. I am speaking into your generation 1,000 years from now. Did you hear what I'm saying now? I am speaking. Your family will be a family that has the legacy of greatness. 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 Ah! I want your pataki. Pataki. Jankon. Jankon. Lo mama jade lati nue. Right? Financial strength. <laughs> That's number what? Number six. Somebody say financial strength. The last day battle is financial war. The last day battle is financial battle. Did you hear me? Jesus spoke more about finance. More than any other subject in the New Testament. Go and read Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Jesus spoke more about money than any other thing. If a vision is going to be a global vision, we must know how to fight financial battles. Finance. Somebody say finance. If you are going to be free, you must be financially free. If you are not truly financially free, you can't be free. Are you hearing me now? Praise God. Financial. How many of you need some money? Eh? How many of you can make do with some, some real money? Huh? Oh, now it's okay. When you show me now it's okay. Praise God. Money. Did you get what I'm saying now? Finance. So what about that? You are the pay shake me. Shashi. Financial. You must win the battle of finance before your destiny can finally speak. Whoever control your finance will control your vision. Are you hearing me now? Praise God. Somebody say financial strength. Say louder, amen. Somebody say financial strength. Say it again. Say it again. How many of you know that most times what you want to eat, you will calculate, 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 and calculate, and calculate, and calculate, and calculate, and calculate, and calculate. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? Huh? When last did you eat by timetable? When I was growing up, we used to eat by timetable. Which is suddenly because then Jamie died. Or just Sunday, or just Sunday issue at any manje. That is what is in the timetable. Issue at any. So I always look forward to that because we like it. Mine. But how many families today are eating by timetable? You discover that people just eat what they see. You are going to do politics, you need a lot of finance. You are going to do ministry, you need a lot of finance. 
reason ti opolopo pastor fi de eru eshu niyan ton fi le did you get what i'm saying now because not all of them can wait and pay the price until the financial breakthrough will come so they have to bend their message change their message partner with the devil because they need money but they can wait but if you are going to wait for god and still continue to say the message as it is you must be ready to pay the price of patience sometimes you have to suffer because when a rich man says eh ah he says so and he leaves the church if you are not strong as a pastor you will go back to his house and go and beg him most pastors have done that did you hear what I'm saying now it takes a lot of courage to say if you want to go, you can go. And yet, you don't know what to eat when you get home. And this is a man that says, excuse me, sir, next week, man, I'm not to you. But this week, he came to you that you, may, you preach a message that turns out so it's going. He said, ah, yes, I am a law. I am a share correction. Ah. Ah. Bye bye. Can you have a brown envelope? Walk us off and people go away with his brown envelope. It takes a lot of strength. It's not a strength of stature. It's an inner strength of the spirit. Did you hear what I just said? Praise God. I've rejected people's money before. Not because I don't need it. But because I don't want anything ungodly to connect with what I'm doing. Is that okay? So you need a lot of strength. So if you are not ready to wait for God, you are not ready to fight that battle, that financial battle and win in the spirit, you will be a slave of the system forever. But I decree over you tonight, your generation will not be a slave of money. Yeah. Did you get all that? Rise on your feet now. Say after me, as from today, I connect my family to strength. I have listed six major strengths there. Is that okay? You connect your life, your family to spiritual strength, physical strength, marital strength, calling strength, career strength. Did you hear that? And what? Financial strength. Say after me. As from today, I connect my family to strength. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Connect my family to strength. Connect my family to strength. I connect my family to strength. 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 Spiritual strength. My family will be strong spiritually. 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 Will be strong spiritually. We will hear the voice of God. We will know the will of God. We will be strong in the purpose of God. In the name of Jesus, my children, myself, my generation will be strong in the spirit. Will be strong in the spirit and in the power of his might. Henceforth, as from today, as from today, as from today, as from today, I connect my family to physical strength. No sickness, no feebleness. In the name of Jesus, physical stamina, physical strength, physical strength. Even in old age, we will be strong. Strong. Highly energetic in the name of Jesus. I connect my family to marital strength. Marital strength. My marriage will be stronger. The marriage of my children will be stronger in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, both male and female. I connect them to marital strength. Marital strength. Marital strength. I connect my family to calling strength. Calling strength. The strength of the calling will rise. The strength of the calling will rise. In my life and in my family, the strength of the calling will rise. 
In the name of Jesus. I connect my family to career strength. Career strength. In their career, they shall be strong. Strong doctors, strong lawyers, strong ICT gurus. In the name of Jesus. Career strength. I connect my family to financial strength. No more poverty. No more mediocrity. No more lack. No more need. Financial strength. Financial strength. Prosperity. Prosperity. Wealth. Wealth. Riches and honor. Are my portion. Riches and honor. Prosperity. Wealth. Financial strength. In Jesus name we pray. Let's pray this final prayer. Say after me. As from today. Life will no longer be brief in my family. Life will no longer be brief in my family. As from today, life will no longer be brief in my family. We have families that die at 40, die at 30, die at 45. Die at 50. That the average family, average life of that family is 50 years. They've died. We have families today that before 50, they are dead. And they can count up to different numbers of people that died before 50. Die, 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 die. Just die. Did you get what I'm saying now? I want you to pray. That as from today, life will no longer be brief in my family. Do you think it is a prayer we should pray? Life will no longer what? Be brief in my family. Now let me tell you, if life will no longer be brief, how will life be? I want you to add this to it. Anybody at 50 or more Yes or no? Good. Life will no longer be brief. Is it only a kind of come and touch you or my boy? Everyone only come and touch you or my bro. She touch you here. Oh, she oh she believe alone. So, and you come and cool down my silly. Everyone only come and that's why you should pray now. Are you hearing me now? There are some people in your extended family that don't have the opportunity of the prayer meeting like this. Because some of them are not the, are not Christians. But you that you are a Christian, you should pray for them. So that their own life will not come and scatter your own. Did you hear now? I tell you, that bro, that bro, be walking from there, be my mate, that bro, be my mefa. That bro, that be up for shonle, up kudan. I'm a mefa fan. You say you will throw them away. Who had the mefa moti eh? Two. Oh, the mello, my job. You know, life is going to be difficult. There are things that the devil will do to make your destiny. Impossible. That's why you should pray now. Onika lukulo ma adagba to ma tojo omoe. Onika lukulo uju a wola wofi in gobe. Shogbo, abro mi oniku, egbo mi oniku, emina oniku, ajo ma adagba tama, tonika luku ma chena wama, onika luku a face life. Did you hear what I'm saying now? That's why you are praying that life will no longer be brief. In my family. It is a problem to the dead. And a greater problem to the living. When life is brief. Did you get that? Okay. God will help us. So if life is not going to be right. This down, life will be long. Life will be full. Life will be sound. Life will be influential. Life will be impacting. I take it again. Life will be long. Life will be full. Life will be sound. Life will be influential. Life will be impacting. And finally, life will be prosperous. How many? Six. Add this life will be abundance. 
Olorun fun wa ni emi gigun ati ojo pupo. Emi legun kojo ma po. Are you hearing me now? Praise God. So pa won ojo kan wa ti le ma tete issue. How many of you notice that? Ile a tete issue. Pe ke by by 6 o'clock ile a ti issue. Do you know that days like that there are places in this country. Am I correct? That by 6 o'clock you it's like it's like 11 o'clock. It's like 11 p.m. By 6 o'clock in the evening, it's already like 11 p.m. How many of you know that there, there are places like that in this country? Am I correct? You, this game man. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> you know, when they, when they took Ayos to go and serve, they, they took him to Taraba. <laughs> when they took Ayos to go and serve, they took him to Taraba. So I called the two of them Gembu. <laughs> Because there is a place in Taraba State they call Gembu. That place, <laughs> I was told, is nine hours drive from Jalingo, which is the capital. Nine hours. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> if you travel from Bakure to Jalingo, 18 hours, you get to see capital. You now go to a local government in the same state, you spend another nine hours. <laughs> and they told me that in Gembu, that by 6 o'clock in the evening, it is already like 11 p.m. I want to go back to Jack At 60, they are looking like 90. Are you hearing me now? You know, that is a. A mile gun called Joma Po. You understand me? One man, you're cool at 100. You want to go to 17 years old, you Do you like that? Eh? Ko je ko di 30 years no fu wa no ku. O le emi egun lo to sugbon. Amen. Are you ready to pray? Say after me as from today. Life will no longer be brief. In my family. Life will be long. Life will be full. Life will be sound. Life will be influential. Life will be impacting. Life will be prosperous. Life will be abundant. Open your mouth and pray. You have written it down. So speak it. Declare, 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 declare. As from today, life will no longer be brief in my family. Life will no longer be brief. 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 In the name of Jesus. We shall not die. We shall live. And declare the works of the Lord. Life will be long. Life will be full. As from now in my family, life will be long, life will be full, life will be sound, life will be influential, life will be impacting, life will be prosperous, life will be abundant in the name of Jesus. Long life, full life, impactful life, influential life, prosperous life, abundant life is my portion, is the portion of my family. No more premature death. No more brief life. No more short life. In the name of Jesus. Long life, full life, healthy life, abundant life, prosperous life, impactful life, influential life is our portion. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, I receive, I release life into every family. By the authority of the name of Jesus, by the authority of the word of God, life abundant. Life abundant. Life abundant is the portion of your family. No more premature death. That scourge is ended. That tragedy is ended. Long life. Full life. 
sound life. Influential life. Impactful life. Prosperous life. Abundant life. Is our portion. As from today, you and your entire family will live long and strong life. I read a book. It says short but glorious life. That's the book. It says short but what? But glorious life. If you read that book and you don't know the Bible very well, you will change your prayer. You will say, Lord, I, even if it is short, let it be glorious. I don't want that. When I, there is no book that can be better than the Bible. So when I finished reading that book, I said, wow. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. What did I say? Uh -uh. No, 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 no. Jesus already had a short and glorious life. I shouldn't flow with that. He had a short life so that I can have what? Long life. As from today, I decree over you and your family, long and glorious life. Long and glorious life. Long and glorious life. Long and glorious life. Long life, full life, sound life, healthy life, influential life, impactful life, prosperous life, abundant life. It's your portion. No more premature death. No more short life. In the name of Jesus. You receive that? It is your portion. Every blessing tonight is your permanent portion. As you go home, the glory of the Lord will go with you. Your dream tonight shall be prophetic. Receive those blessings. Receive those provisions. No more fruitless branch. No more lifeless branch. Fruitful branch. Abundant branch. Filled with abundant life. Is your portion. You receive that. It is your portion. Let's rise up on our feet.